Mr. Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big Ten football predictions today. And our next team went a disappointing 4-8 and last season, but bringing a new head coach and have plenty of talent to get back to a bowl game. They are the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska's season didn't look promising after a narrow win over Arkansas State, 43-36 to in the season opener. Then just two weeks later, they lost at home to Northern Illinois, 21-17, to and really I think that marked the beginning of the end for this Cornhusker season. But they were 4-4 four and four with four weeks left to play, but they unfortunately lost all of those to finish the season 4-8. and eight. But this year, things are looking better for the Cornhuskers. They bring in Scott Frost, a uh, coach from Central Florida, doing a great job there, going undefeated last season, including that win over Auburn in the Peach Bowl. On offense, they returned seven starters, and that's where things are going to get a little tricky. Scott Frost, being the offensive mind that he is, should be able to turn this Nebraska team around on that side of the ball. But they're more than likely going to have to start Adrian Martinez, a freshman quarterback, but they do return their top two wide receivers and Stanley Morgan, one of the better wide receivers in the Big Ten, and then J.D. Spielman. So that is a big boost for Martinez, having solid wide receivers to throw to and have some talent on that side of the ball. They also return four of their five offensive linemen from last season, so a low experience along the offensive line. Uh, should be good protection for Martinez uh, to be able to make some plays in the pocket. They return eight starters on defense. The defense allowed 36.4 points per game last year, and despite having some coaching changes with Scott Frost bringing, his, uh, bringing him in his coordinators, they will remain a 3-4 defense. So hopefully uh, that consistency there uh, will benefit the Cornhuskers, not having to switch back to a 4-3 or something like that. They uh, bring in Mick Stoltenberg and Carlos Davis along the defensive line, and Lamar Jackson, the cornerback, DiCaprio Boodle and Aaron Williams uh, will lead the secondary. So a very experienced secondary for the Cornhuskers. Uh, and I think that will be their strength on defense this season. So I think overall, the defense overall will be the, the strength of this Cornhuskers team, more so than their offense. But I do expect uh, some more production on the offensive side of the ball. They only averaged about 25 points per game last year. So Nebraska should see an increase in that under Scott Frost. But in Scott Frost's first year, the schedule didn't do him any favors. They draw Michigan, Ohio State, and Michigan State, so arguably the top three teams in the Big Ten East. They draw all of those uh, out of the East this year. They have to go on the road to Wisconsin, on the road to Northwestern, and on the road to Iowa. So not a very favorable schedule for Nebraska this year. And if they're going to want to get back to a bowl game, they're going to have to do most of their damage uh, before the bye week on October 27th. They open the season up against Akron. I'm not too worried about this game, so a win for Nebraska there. And then an intriguing matchup against Colorado, uh, re-meeting as former Big 12 rivals. This is the first meeting between these two schools since 2010. It's always fun to see uh, two old rivals go at each other, uh, especially when they're in separate conferences now. So this should be a fun one at Nebraska, but Colorado only returns about 10 starters and only returns four on offense. They're going to be led by their quarterback, Steven Montez, so that's big uh, to get their quarterback that returns, but I don't really see Colorado being able to come into Nebraska and get a win here. It's going to be a pretty packed crowd, I would think. Uh, I think Nebraska, uh, after that week one win, should be able to fix some stuff up on offense. So the defense is still going to be solid, so his defense going up against a weaker Colorado offense. I think Nebraska gets a big-time win there. And then I think they get a big-time win over Troy. We shouldn't see a repeat of Troy's upset win over LSU last year. And then at Michigan, so they start Big Ten play against the Wolverines on the road, and this is a solid Michigan team this year. 17 returning starters, Shea Patterson coming in uh, from Ole Miss, and the defense is one that I really like this year. Wasn't too high on them last year, but I actually predicted Michigan's record correct last year, going 8-4 and four in the regular season. Uh, but the defense only returned one starter last year. This year they returned nine. So I think this is by far Jim Harbaugh's best team at Michigan, or at least one of his best teams at Michigan. Uh, and they really will compete in this Big Ten East. With this game being on the road, I just don't see them being able to get the win here for Nebraska. So a loss there, the first in the Scott Frost era. And then they get Purdue back at home. Purdue's a team they won. Uh, they beat last year on the road just by one point, 25 to 24. And this is a Purdue team that I really like their offense this year, but not so much their defense. The offense should be fine with regardless who's at quarterback, Elijah Sindelar or David Blow, but only four returning starters on the defensive side of the ball. That's going to be the big time weakness. And with it being this early in the season, just being week five, I don't know how much this Purdue defense is going to be able to progress. Usually I can see them getting stronger as the season goes on, but maybe not in week five. They still need a little bit of time. This game is at home. Nebraska got the win on the road last year with the worst team that they're going to have this year. I'm going to give them the win over the Boilermakers. And then a big-time stretch here with uh, Wisconsin Northwestern, both 
on the road. Wisconsin, by far the best team in the Big Ten West. You got Alex Hornbrook, Jonathan Taylor, the entire offensive line returning, uh, solid tight ends and receivers. And the defense that only returns four starters, but under Paul Chris will continue to stay dominant uh, and really shut down some of these Big Ten offenses. So this game's on the road. Nebraska, if they can't find things clicking on their offense, could be in for a rough time at Wisconsin. I'm going to give them a loss to the Badgers here. I don't see many people beating uh, Wisconsin at all this year anyways. And then on the road against Northwestern, another intriguing matchup here on the road as well. Uh, Northwestern returning 14 starters, including their quarterback in Clayton Thorson. They lose Justin Jackson uh, at running back. And I do like the Northwestern's defense this year. Uh, like Nebraska is going to have a pretty solid secondary. But this game is on the road. I think Northwestern's just more experienced. They have more consistency, obviously, at the, at the head coaching position. Uh, more consistency at the quarterback position, returning Clayton Thorson. So I think overall there's going to be more experience uh, and add a uh, home field advantage onto that. I just don't see Nebraska being able to go on the road and get a win here. So a loss for them there. But they return home right before the bye week, and I'm giving them a win over Minnesota and P.J. Flex team. Two of the, I think, one, two of the better young head coaches in the nation going at it, P.J. Flex and Scott Frost. Uh, I think it's great. They're both in the same division in the Big Ten now. This game playing, being played at Nebraska. And Minnesota, like the Cornhuskers, I think going to have some issues on the offensive side of the ball, but their strength will be their defense. Uh, so with this game being at home and with Nebraska, I think maybe even being a little bit better on the offensive side of the ball than Minnesota at this point, I want to give them a win over the Golden Gophers going into their bye week. And so they have five wins going into the bye week. They're going to be looking pretty good. They're five and three. Uh, and after that bye week, they have to go on the road to Ohio State. Obviously not going to be an easy game there. Ohio State also coming off of a bye coming into this game. It also marks the beginning of November, the most important month in college football, where we can say we can see anything that could happen. But this game, being on the road against an Ohio State team led by Urban Meyer, uh, Dwayne Haskins, Nick Bosa, J.K. Dobbins, you name it, they've got a lot of talent on this Ohio State team, one that could potentially make a return to the college football playoffs. And despite having that week of rest, I don't see this being the big-time win uh, that Scott Frost is going to get. So a loss for the Cornhuskers there. But they get bowl eligibility with a win over Illinois. Uh, by far, I think the worst team in the Big Ten. Lovey Smith really has his work cut out for him over there. Only 16 returning starters. Most of those guys young, though. Illinois not known for bringing in a lot of talent, especially through recruiting. So this game, being at home, Illinois just being a weak team and a, and a young team, really. They could get to the point where they can get back to a bowl game under Lovey Smith. It's just going to take some more time. Uh, so a win for Nebraska there. Then Michigan State and Iowa round out the season for Nebraska. They've already clinched bowl eligibility, so the pressure was off in that regard, but they'd like to get to a better bowl game. Michigan State at home. The last time uh, the Michigan State visited the Cornhuskers, uh, they got a big-time win over the Spartans that we thought could have ended Michigan State's college ball playoff hopes, but they let her beat Ohio State. They won that game 39-38. to I just don't see a repeat of that this year. This could be the game that Scott Frost could get his signature win in year one. I just don't see it, though, because Michigan State returns 19 starters, uh, 10 on offense, 9 on defense, a super, super experienced team. My dark horse to potentially win the Big Ten East. And I don't know if it's that big of a dark horse because this is going to be a very, very solid team. Should be a top 15 at least to start the season. So I'm going to give Michigan State the win here on the road. It could be closer, about a half or three quarters. Michigan State pulls away in the end. And then on the road at Iowa, this would be a big win for Scott Frost because Nebraska has lost three straight games to the Hawkeyes, including a 56-14 to loss last year and a 40-10 to loss in 2016. So it would be great uh, for Scott Frost to go into Iowa and, and get that win over their rival to snap that three-game losing streak. But I think it's going to be a four-game losing streak for the Cornhuskers. It's on the road. Kinnick Stadium is one of the toughest places to play in the nation. You've got Nathan Stanley returning at quarterback and a solid, solid Iowa defense as well. I just don't see Nebraska being able to go on the road and get the job done the day after Thanksgiving. So that's going to leave Nebraska with a 6-6 six and six record on the year. And really, that's pretty respectable. In Scott Frost's first year, we would take a Nebraska team that went 4-8 and eight last year and get them back to a bowl game. That is a great stepping stone, a great starting point for a first-year head coach. Get them to a bowl game. Maybe they win. They're 7-6. and six. They're going to benefit from bowl practices. So that's going to be a huge benefit uh, for the Cornhuskers. And I expect them to even take a bigger leap next year. And 6-6 six and six with this type of schedule, like I said, with Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State, and then road games against Wisconsin, Northwestern, and Iowa – I mean, that's a tough, tough schedule. So if you can survive this schedule and get to 6-6, six and six, that's a job well done for Scott Frost and a sign of good things to come 
for Nebraska fans. So I have Nebraska going 6-6 six and six in the 2018 season. Cannot wait to see what Scott Frost does with this team, not only this year, but for the future. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert, on Instagram at The Gridiron Expert, and always here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.